Hi, I'm Jeff Janis, an Associate Professor of Plastic Surgery in Dallas, Texas. And I welcome the opportunity to discuss this outstanding article from the MD Anderson Cancer Center. This article is about outcomes. Outcomes between two specific products. A porcine product, specifically Stratus, from LifeCell, and a bovine product, specifically Surgimend, from TEI Biosciences. And it's important to note that the results of this are specifically using Stratus versus Surgimend and cannot be extrapolated beyond these as these types of materials are not created equal. As a matter of fact, in the discussion of this paper, the authors are very careful to point out that the results of this study are specifically comparing these two products. This group looked at complication rates in a head-to-head -head analysis of a retrospective review of a prospectively collected database. They looked at complications that are both short-term and long-term, the short-term complications being 30 days or less and long-term complications being 30 days or more. Seven authors on the paper, one of them a biostatistician. Three of the authors had no affiliations with industry, including the lead author, and I think that that's an important thing to point out. Two of the authors were affiliated with TEI Biosciences and one formerly affiliated with LifeCell. To me, this re represents a balanced perspective, an honest look at the data in the greatest attempts possible reporting this comparative effectiveness study the study looks at 120 patients, 69 of them using Stratus, 51 using Surgiment, and follows them out an average of 21 months, although the Stratus cohort was followed out for longer, approximately 24 months, and the Surgiment followed 18 months, approximately. They looked at complication rates, medical, surgical, and device failures. They also cohorted all of these together to look at all complication rates. Let me cut to the chase. The medical complications are irrelevant with respect to the type of acellular dermal matrix that's used. Things like cardiac failure, renal failure, pulmonary failure, et cetera, et cetera, those types of medical complications are not going to be related to the type of acellular dermal matrix used. Therefore, I will not include them in parts of my discussion. The surgical complications, however, are specific to the types of ADMs used. This study, however, pointed out that the surgical complication rate was essentially equivalent between these two products. The most important part of this, however, is that these results are underpowered. And as the authors note in their discussion section, it would take 514 patients per arm, or 1,028 patients overall, in order to power this study to the greatest extent possible to show a difference between these two groups. Using a high volume single institution like MD Anderson, they admit that this would take approximately 27 years. So the medical complications are irrelevant. The surgical complications, even if statistically significant, which they're not, are underpowered. And this leads us to the third group, which is device failures. All of the device failures appeared in the Stratus group and none in the Surgimen group. So one would expect that these materials are constructed differently, uh, one being stronger and one being maybe more variable or less strong. And at the end of the day, that's difficult to prove because there are, are 14 surgeons contributing to this experience while there were seven device failures. So clearly, some of these device failures occurred in some of the surgeon's hands whereas they did not occur in other surgeons' hands. Was that because of certain patient uh, subpopulations, specifically the Stratus group had a higher history of recurrent hernias, component separations, ostomy takedowns? Was that related or not? Or was it surgeon specific? Did most of the device failures occur in a small number of surgeons or maybe even a single surgeon? It's difficult to say because the data is not presented in this way. All of the surgeons attempted to use the MD Anderson technique whereby physiologic tension is restored in the midline, and that's specifically described. But since this is not a single surgeon experience that would remove that confounding variable, it makes the conclusions difficult to interpret.
One could surmise that these patients could be more difficult to get tension reestablished in the midline if they've had previous operations, previous ostomy takedowns, and the need for a component separation. The device failures are voluntarily reported, and that's an important thing to note, is that this is not mandatory, but these are voluntary. In the future, we would like to see all device failures reported mandatorily so we could uh, offset selection bias. So in conclusion, I would applaud all of the authors from the MD Anderson Cancer Center for presenting their data in as transparent and honest and forthright fashion as they did, and it is a welcome addition to the hernia literature. Thank you.